afternoon. How you doing? Good afternoon. I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Um, I made myself a cup of tea while you were getting coffee. Uh, where am I finding you today? Cheers. Um, I am located in Texas, DFW area. All right. <laughs> um, and how has your day been so far? Did it just start? Pretty much just started. You know, it's a weekend, so. I'm sorry. Loud music. But. Yeah, it's a weekend for me, an off day, so just pretty much got up early to do this. Okay, but. well, I'm flattered and honored. Um, uh, you, uh, you started working, so where are you working? Um, actually, I am working at an elementary school. Oh. Um, yeah, it's my first time having like this kind of job working around kids like this. And it's, I'm doing after school, but I teach an art program in the after school. So it's really fun. You know, I get to do something that kind of incorporates what I enjoy doing. So yeah. it's probably my favorite job that I've had so far. Definitely. Well, that's great. Cause yeah, when I, ch when we checked in in the summer, there wasn't anything going on at that time. So I noticed that I think something had changed, and it sounds like it's a really yeah, positive I've been change. Yeah, I out of work for a long time. Yeah. Um, so is the, the school's open and everything despite COVID? Um, despite COVID, yeah. We've returned to school. We've been back for about, I want to say like five months now, so a while. Okay. That we... Great. Well, um... Thanks for joining me. Um, um, yeah, your art is exciting to me. And when we started communicating, you didn't have very much up on your page. Um, how long have you been posting art online? I want to say it's been, I'm really bad with time, really bad with time, terrible memory and terrible time. But I want to say it's been about a year. All right. Um, and it's pretty new. Was there anything that specific that motivated you to decide to start doing that? Oh, great. I'm glad you asked me that because there's so many people that make digital art and post it online that I, you know, follow and watch their posts and gain not only inspiration from them, but they make me want to create and put out there. So I think seeing all those other people, because before I didn't know there was such a big community on Instagram of people making, you know, not only digital art, but Photoshop style, affinity design, that kind of like manipulating images art. And so when I learned about that, it really made me want to try it. Anybody in particular? Um, Twigweed is one of my favorites. Um, Bot Surgery Glamour. Um, seven different heavens. Yeah. So many, so many okay. that I really love. And do you know any of these people personally, or have you interacted with them over Instagram? I've interacted with them over Instagram. Me and seven different heavens. We actually have a collab coming up. Right. Um, but as far as like personally, I don't know them that well. Just kind of mutuals that I've made through social media. Okay. Um. All right. And what's that experience like? Like, how would you describe the difference between those kind of friends that you find online and the ones that you have in the physical IRL world? Um, I think it's really special to me because it's kind of hard to make communications with people over line because you don't really know those people and you're not really in a position where you guys are in the same place to talk. So it's kind of like making relationships with those people is like, both of you kind of going out of your way to build an online relationship with someone when there's not really those, it's not expected. It's not set up for you to kind of communicate in that way. So you're kind of reaching out and taking a chance. And I've learned a lot of things and met some really great people that way. All right. Um, 
well, maybe we should talk about some of the images on your page. I sent you a few uh, shots of the ones I, I thought would be interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is called Negate. Uh, what, what's going on in this image? So in this image, I really like to compile like a lot of abstract shapes. So I kind of use the affinity design path tool to make my own shapes. And I use blur effects to give it a very like soft, I kind of like the image or the idea of things that are like almost blurred, but it has definition to it. It just has like an airbrush softness to it. And then I like to caption it in a gate because I basically used like, first the image was made in black and white and it's still in black and white, but basically I put the negation filter on it. So it gives it that kind of glow and it changes the color. Um, I just wanted to focus that image basically around the fading colors and the transitions from black into white. And you posted three versions of it. Are those uh, three different moments in the creative process or are those three different finished products? Three different moments in the creative process. Basically, when I finish an image, as far as the actual drawing of the image, then I tweak the image with different photo effects so I can basically play with the colors and change it up. I like to turn up the contrast, turn up the shadows, those kind of things. So that's just a result of me playing with those effects. But it's like, it, it's, um, is it like um, from beginning to end or well, like some of those, um, in the three images you posted, are those like you went in a certain direction and then you went backwards and then tried going in a different way? Usually, um, yes. Usually when I make an image, I can't really decide a lot of the time which one's the final product that I like. I never really know like when I'm done, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I have a couple different versions sometimes, and that's, a, that's what happened there. Just a couple different, I made this, mm, I like this one too, so I kind of just play around, and as I'm going, I will save the file, then go back and work on the file, save it again, you know? Yeah. So it's just different times in the creative process right it's it's i guess it's a combination of both it's like moments in the creative process where it felt like it could be done but then you decided for whatever reason to keep going uh -huh. huh yeah i find that interesting because when when is it really done and um what is kind of completion and i think completion is really important and i think it's so important in life to finish things that you start um but as an artist there's this other way of looking at everything where you want to be open to um th you know these things are like your babies or they're alive or whatever and you want to be open to letting them guide you um well why don't uh move on to the next one um which was the vintage raw poster commission Ra vintage rave poster commission this is the first image like when i when i found your account you were working on this and you had like a few different details or different ideas of this posted at that time. And I just, yeah, I was like, I was looking at a lot of different stuff at that time, um, following lots of new people. And there was something about that, that thing you were working on that made me want to talk to you. So, um, tell me about the, tell me about the, uh, commission. Um, that's really cool. So actually, that commission was someone from someone who lives near me. So that was kind of cool that um, someone in my area actually saw my art and then wanted to buy from me. That made me feel like really acknowledged and appreciated. But um, basically they came to me for a commission and they showed me a few examples of some like 70s rave posters, 70s, 80s, like retro rave posters. And in those images, I saw like a lot of geometric shapes. Um, there was a lot of focus on bringing together like realism and like just like a geometric like factor. So I tried to put together that with like bringing the realism of like the hands and then I wanted to bring like perspective into it. Um, so it's kind of just like my take on like retro rave poster and how 
what's guiding you when you, how do you know which geometric shape is going to look good and you know like wh what is that i definitely play around um i wanted to kind of make something that had that factor but i didn't want it to be too distracting i still want that to be the background image the geometric shapes and i wanted to bring forth like a focus in the middle with the hands so i decided on circles because i feel like they're soft enough to where it won't take away from the main image. It's kind of, to me, it was a perfect shape because it's not too sharp or distracting that you can still focus on the main middle image. That was my kind of what I wanted to push out there. I wanted to have room for, you know, to put the information that needs to be on the poster and to keep that focus in the middle image and kind of have that as a background that's not too busy but still interesting and bringing you, bringing attention, bringing you in. When I looked at it, I, I found the image of playing cards really compelling, and I didn't really understand why. Um, but playing cards are interesting because they are uh, an expression of the combination of chance and intention. Uh, and do you think that that, um, as an artist, like... Is that something that um, you feel like you can ever master? Um, it's hard, you know, because I kind of like, I, I think also what you're saying, playing cards are very interesting. And I would also like to make more art in the future and incorporating them. I think that was also like one of the most fun parts of that piece. And I think it is definitely the eye catching part of that piece. Um, but as far as like the shapes and everything, like I feel like the playing cards are very interesting. I did try to, um, if you look at that piece, you can notice like I took out some parts. I used Photoshop to remove some parts of the playing card so you can see the background coming through it. So that's kind of what made me decide to use the playing cards because I got that idea that I could kind of bring the background into the foreground of the image using that. Um, huh. But uh, as far as mastering anything, it's something I can only work on, you know. Yeah. I'm never sure if I can master anything. Yeah, well, um, like you said, you play around to, to find your way into figuring out what the composition should be or what the design element should be. And that is kind of like uh, shuffling through, you know, I mean, who knows how much of it is our unconscious just making these decisions for circles instead of triangles um, or whatever. But uh, but I think it is it, it's good to think of it as like uh, play and as a game and, and the cards uh, definitely um, just instantly kind of bring that feeling into our minds. Um, the next one is called All Comes to Light. That piece is actually my most recent, or no, All Comes to Light. Oh, okay, I'm remembering. Um, that piece was again, I used the path tool in Affinity they have that tool on Affinity and Photoshop. It's one of my favorite tools because it's really useful in making your own shapes. Um, I just wanted to compile some abstract shapes and I kind of wanted to bring in like the element of like shading into that as well. It's kind of, I don't know, it's a little hard to explain a lot of my pieces because I kind of just start working and get in a groove. I don't know a lot of the times what I'm going to make before I make it. I kind of just hop into it. And whatever comes out of it is like, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely just wanted to play around again with some shapes. And probably two of my like favorite things are playing around with making my own shapes. And then I really like doing like fading or like making things look soft and blurred kind of that effect. Um, and do you have any memory of how you felt while you were making this piece? I just remember feeling that um, I was really captivated by this piece. Like, I just thought it was very beautiful. Um, 
I remember feeling like really proud of the end product and um, I was really just trying to go for something like abstract kind of. Um, I really don't like, I feel less pressure when I'm working with abstract. I feel like things are less defined and boundaries are more open. So I was kind of just, it was very freeing, I feel. Okay. Um, yeah, the next one, Oddcore. This one, this one's really intense. Uh, talk about this one. How, how, do you remember how you were feeling when you made this? Um, I remember being inspired by pretty much like a lot of pictures that I saw on um, We Heart It. It's kind of like Pinterest, another app of just image collection. Okay. But um, I wanted it to have kind of like a little creepy factor. I do enjoy that kind of like gore and creepiness. Um, so I have tried to like play around with that and making art. Um, there's another user on Instagram. His name is their name. I don't know if it's a girl or, or who. I don't know who it is like that. But their name is Snarge. And they make a lot of like gory art. And I remember like just seeing some of their art and thinking, well, I'd like to try like using some elements of like blood and things like that in my art. So that kind of inspired me to make something um, with just a little bit of a creepy factor. And I really do, um, that's one thing I can say, I feel like I may have mastered is making blood, fake blood on um, digital okay. art. All right. So. Well, maybe we'll show a couple other of the images that you've done with blood here now um, so people can see them. Um, but this odd core image, like to have, a, to have a hand in the foreground, it really puts the viewer in the perspective of the artist. And I don't know if you have anything to say about that, but it's like it's quite a experience to look at a piece of work this way and think about the artist making it and sort of what's going through their mind for them to depict this kind of POV, you know, style image. I'm really glad you said that because that was kind of my goal. Like the way the image is, it's like you're looking at your own hands. And I thought that was cool. It definitely does put the viewer like in the moment. Um, I just think, especially because it's not just, it's not, very lighthearted, I guess, but it puts them in the moment and then the moment itself is kind of intense. So I feel like that's really, I'm glad you said that, captured exactly what I was trying to communicate. Okay. So. Well, and it's like, I guess it's a matter of perspective whether or not it's lighthearted, you know, like a lot, you know, if you've played a lot of video games and stuff, or, you know, you, you may have experience with games that combine some horror elements and some humor. Um, but then mm -hmm. also if you just catch an image like that on the right or wrong day, you might find it really creepy. Um, so there's two more, uh, smoke break. So this is interesting, this... interesting image. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I worked on that for a long time, for a very long time. That took me like a month. I want to say, Whoa. Um, yeah, I, that's probably one of the pieces that I feel like I've put the most work into. Um, my goal, I took an image, like I'm in my garage right now. And, um, if you can see like, that's my, this is my smoking area. Um, so that's kind of a big part of my life. Um, nicotine addiction, but, um, Put that into I kind of just wanted to share that environment because it's such a big part of my life I wanted to capture it so I took that image and basically just took a picture and tried my best to recreate it using Photoshop it was really um, time-consuming because I made everything from scratch like I made I used shapes I made the cigarette I made the bowl or the ashtray so it took a lot of time I even made the ashes which was like an interesting experience. Um, but yeah, I really just, that's created from an actual photo. I can send you the reference photo later, but okay. yeah, sure. it's just me trying to create something using realism. And it's my first time um, 
doing something like that with that much realism in it. So. And did you trace it or did you have them side by side? I just kept it side by side. I didn't trace anything. I just kept it side by side and did my best to like recreate what I saw. Well, and, and when I look at the image, I can tell it's not a photo, except the lighters look really real. So those are also, you painted those yourself too, even like the barcode? So I want to explain that. So the purple lighter is actually an image. The purple lighter is a, I looked up an image of a lighter, cut it out in Photoshop, and then I used effects to like make it look 3D and make it look like it's not just an image, but a 3D real, you know, object. Um, the other lighter I did make. So the first, the purple lighter is an image and the other lighter I did make. Okay. Well, yeah, it's like they're perfectly integrated and it's very, very puzzling to look at it and try to make sense of it. Um, Thanks. yeah, it's like, anyway, it's a, for people who have nicotine addiction, that's a, <laughs> that's a site that they see a lot and, um, I guess take for granted and maybe don't ever give a second look. Um, but, uh, art that depicts something that a person sees every day is so personal, you know? Um, so, uh, it has that, it has that like gravity in it, you know? Um, yeah. And that's just, it's a really big part of my life. I feel like I almost feel like this area here is like my second room. Like I spend a lot of time here. So mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to share that with everyone else. Okay. Um, the last one is, is your most recent, I, I don't remember what the title is, but it's this figure looking into the light and you, there, it, there isn't really a title. There's like a caption about light and darkness. Um, I think I captioned that they couldn't understand why I walked into the dark. They didn't see the way it mimicked light. Um, I was kind of just trying to play with like effects. I wanted to make it look almost as if there's a dark space, but it's glowing. Like it's drawing you in and it's kind of confusing because it just looks black. It just looks like darkness, but the darkness is emanating light. And so um, I used two checkered board um, photos and I had to manipulate them to kind of give the perspective that one is the um, side wall and one is this wall. So I had to kind of manipulate the images to make them fit that um, perspective. Okay. But I've just been really into like that. Again, I used the path tool. I made my own shapes um, to kind of make that person standing there or walking into the darkness. And I've just been really into like shadows, light and dark. So I kind of just incorporated that. Um, I was kind of just feeling kind of like misunderstood. And I feel like that captures that. Like, I feel like looking at that or if people, if that were a real life situation, someone's walking into the dark and to them, they're seeing light. They're seeing something promising in the dark, but other people don't see what they're seeing. Right. That's kind of what I was trying to communicate, like hmm. just the feeling of being misunderstood. Wow. Yeah, well, it 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 um, it leads me nicely to the next question, which is like you were just talking about your job and we've talked about these images you made and the and the, the tools you like to use. Um, what's the deal with your handle? I hate making art. Um, but maybe it's you... just kind of. I don't really necessarily hate making art, you know, one, it was a little funny, I kind of thought, but two, it does have like some truth to it. I feel like as an artist, a lot of time it's, it's a struggle. Like it's not all just like being happy with your product and feeling proud and satisfied. A lot of times I struggle to make art, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like a love hate relationship for me because it takes so much like from me, but when I make something and I'm proud of it and I get to put it out there, it's such a great feeling. So just like a two-sided kind of, I love making art, but I also have a love hate relationship with it. Yeah. And you've chosen to put the hate 
and like, yeah. <laughs> like get it out of the way, you know, um, say, say it right up front. It just kind of reminds me of like walking, being drawn towards the darkness because to you, it has a glow to it that there's actually something positive in there waiting for you. And, okay. um, I understand what you mean about having a love hate relationship with that process and, and, um, you know, they say that you got to like face your fears or like walk into your unconscious, anything that scares you, the way to grow is to go towards it. And maybe that's kind of the, my little armchair interpretation of what you just told me of like, maybe that's the message. Cause like, yeah, I read it and I was like, you know, it's, it's kind of cute and funny and it's not, you know, um, but then now talking to you, it's like, well, well shit, like you, you know, you're like, really nice and and obviously God <laughs> is like bringing you a lot of joy and you're bringing it to children and everything so it's uh it's yeah it, it it's like it has dissonance with that but of course instagram is kind of like a two-dimensional platform so it doesn't show the whole person yeah of course i mean we never know we really never know what the people we meet online are really like you know yeah it's kind of like part of them that we don't really get to see your experience so we kind of have to just make those like little inferences until we learn like what they're really like I yeah guess. uh okay well i feel like that's everything i'm gonna ask so if you just hang on for a second i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the stop button um 